To give your Space Marine armor the appearance of metal, follow these steps. With your Chaos Black Primed Miniature, make sure you hold it directly underneath a light source so that you can visibly see the reflections of the light bouncing off the armor. I would even encourage you to take a photo of how the light reflects off the armor so that when we continue through this tutorial, you can know precisely where to paint your layers. We are going to base coat our miniature with a mix of black red and British khaki by AK Interactive. Make sure the paint that you're applying to your miniature has been thinned down with water. You're going to need to apply multiple base coats. Just make sure that every layer that you apply dries before placing the next layer on top. With a thinned down mix of medium rust and Japanese brown, you'll be applying that paint to a portion of the miniature's surface that reflects light the most. This is why we were holding our prime miniature underneath the light source so that we can visibly see where these light sources are so that when it comes to layering, we know precisely where to position our paint so that we can build upon our layers. Create a glaze by adding lamine medium and water to your base coat and make sure it's 95% thinned down so that you can have control over how much you want to apply without compromising your paint job. The idea here is to gradually blend the base coat with the top layer so that there could be a seamless transition between the two. Be prepared to apply multiple layers and let the paint dry after every layer. Next, we are going to add a thinned down mix of beige red and Japanese brown to our palette. Make sure when you're applying this mix onto the armor's surface that you think about a pyramid. You don't want to completely overlap the pre-existing layer that you're building on top of it. And actually, by doing this, your space screen armor is going to have the appearance of copper gradient. Introduce a new tone to your wet palette by evenly mixing together your two layer paints. Make sure you thin down your paint before applying it to the surface of the miniature. By introducing the new mid-tone of the two pre-existing layers, you subtly bring together the layers which have been previously applied to the miniature's surface. As you can see, the transitions between the two tones become holistic and a natural gradient has formed. Add a thin down mix of ivory and just a little bit of Japanese brown to your wet palette. The idea is to apply this to the portion of the armor which is exposed to the light source the most. Again, if you are unclear about where precisely the light source is exposed the most to the armor, then reference the photos that you've taken earlier when you've held the miniature as seen in the first part of this video. To blend the ivory and Japanese brown mix into the gradient, we are going to apply a glaze of the medium rust and beige red mix and slightly overlap the layers together. I always do this after introducing a new layer so that it gets brought back into the mix of colors situated on the armor. As you can see, this really brings the miniature to life. On your wet palette, make a glaze out of your medium rust mix and apply it to the surface of your miniature, overlapping the darkest parts of the gradient. By doing this, you help smooth the dynamic range between the brightest and the darkest parts of the miniature's armor. Now, what you want to do is you want to take a thinned down mix of your base coat and apply some recess shading. The idea here is to create space between armored plates so that we have some definition. When edge highlighting, make sure to use the side of your brush when applying paint to the edges of the armor. For the finishing touches, we will be applying a very thin down glaze of our ivory and Japanese brown mix to the very brightest surface of the armor. For more awesome walkthroughs like this, follow me for more.